Did that work? It didn't light up. There we go. No, it's not. Don't punch the button. <clears throat> All right. Um, so I'm going to talk to you today about um, the fact that I think MediaWiki should be, emphasis on should, um, exceptionally easy to install and administrate. Um, so yeah, emphasis on exception, or sorry, emphasis on should be. Um, that's not the case right now. It's not the case where it, uh, that it has been historically. Um, and I'm also going to talk about kind of some things that are working towards that mark. Um, first off, my name is James Montalvo. I've been um, working with MediaWiki for about eight years, um, starting out not knowing anything about MediaWiki, um, of course, and um, over the years have done a lot to build extensions and um, automate the process of, of uh, administrating a server. So um, again, I started out with, sorry, um, started out as um, kind of a new user and I really wish when I had started out, MediaWiki had been exceptionally easy to install and administrate. Um, as a new user, that would have saved me tons of time. That would have gotten me on board a lot faster. So who would have benefited if we, if we were in that case now? Absolutely, the new users is the obvious. Um, those are the people that don't know how to get started. But it also has a lot of benefit for, for um, pretty much everyone else. I think these groups probably um, include everybody in this room. Please feel free to speak up if that's not the case. But some other people that have huge benefits, uh, there's probably a lot of you that have somebody else that's um, managing your MediaWiki installation for you. Um, and so maybe you think, I don't really care how easy it is to install and administrate. Somebody else does that job for me. Um, but you got to think about the fact that you know, sometime down the line, that person may go away, that group may change. Um, and also, you may want those people or, or person to do something more complex, help you integrate your MediaWiki um, instance with some other thing that you have within your organization. Um, and you'd rather them have the bandwidth to do that and not be wasting time just you know, trying to upgrade MediaWiki to the new version, which takes a considerable amount of effort at present. Um, so even if you think you don't care, you probably do care. Um, experienced maintainers, that's kind of the people that these people are relying upon. Um, maybe you rolled your own solution that you have some script that does all of your installation for you, but um, that has to change as MediaWiki changes. So if you are maintaining this thing, yeah, okay, maybe it got you to the point you're at now, but you are still having to make that effort to figure out how to upgrade to the next step. Um, support providers, that's kind of, you know, we see a lot of the people, Mark and, and Cindy and, and Greg, on, on uh, support channels on MediaWiki.org um, answering people's questions, right? And you, of, you often get some user coming in and saying, hey, I'm getting this error message, right? And the, the typical response to that is, well, what, you know, what platform are you using? You know, are you on Windows or are you on Debian or are you on Red Hat, whatever, right? And so it's like it's generally a few questions back and forth that get narrowed down to, what are you, what is, what is your use case? What, is your, what are your initial conditions that we have to deal with? If we had MediaWiki being really easy to install and administrate, that kind of leads us towards all coalescing to a similar setup, which means that support providers are gonna look at this and say, well, now I don't have to ask you all these questions because I already know you're probably on this, and if you're getting that kind of error message, then here's probably the steps to get um, get to the next, or get to the solution. Um, we've got several consultants in here. Um, you may be thinking, well, I want to have my own solution because then, then I have my product that I can, that I can um, package up. But um, you know, I, I don't, I don't imagine you want to be spending a lot of time just, just installing MediaWiki. And if the base MediaWiki is easy to install and administrate, you then have the ability to spend more time adding actual value to your customers and doing it in less time. Um, and lastly, the Wikimedia Foundation. Um, I think there's several reasons um, that this would benefit the Wikimedia Foundation. Um, first off is, is these people. Um, if we make this easy to give out to lots of new users, um, that's more people feeding into the ecosystem. Um, secondly, those new users have more time to give back to the community. There's less time just figuring out how to get set up and less time 
taking up other people's time. Um, and more time being able to say, oh, I wish MediaWiki could do this. I'm going to add this. I'm going to figure out how to um, contribute back to the community. Um, additionally, <clears throat> by having a kind of consistent setup, we get people doing things with best practices. You know, there's a, another thing that happens in a lot of these support channels is somebody will say, well, I'm going to do X, Y, and Z to, to solve my problem. And then you get a lot of responses that say, well, that's insecure or that's really inefficient or whatever. But if we have a base platform that's a good start, you get people thinking about how to do it the right way. Um, and then the last thing, and I think this is kind of the kicker and, and is related to new users, um, something that I keep mentioning, Mark, he's so prolific. Uh, no, this is a good thing. Uh, um, something Mark said, I think, last year or the year before at, at this conference, um, maybe it was even before that. Um, if you've got somebody, well, let me, let me first say, I've tried for years to get my mom to edit Wikipedia. <laughs> um, um, she fits, uh, with her, her expertise, she fits into a good category of people that, that should be editing Wikipedia because of, of um, information that is missing from Wikipedia. And so I've tried over and over to get her to do it, and I'm not successful at it. <laughs> so I imagine, and, and this is what, what Mark said, what if people like that got to Wikipedia, saw some either missing information or incorrect information, and said, oh, I can edit this. I've, I've done this at work. Right? This is exactly like the thing I edit at work. Um, I think that's where this is the serious benefit to the, to the Wikimedia Foundation, is we make this easy to set up, then um, the next step is it, it, it proliferates through um, government organizations and businesses and whatnot, and, and generally increases the ability for people to, to do this and to use MediaWiki. So let's look at what install looks like now. Um, If you go to the install page on MediaWiki.org, you're pre presented with roughly this. This page continues, like probably down into the fourth floor. Um, um, if you click on kind of the first place where you're probably, as a new user, going to wonder where, what that means, you know, like the first, first page kind of deep on there, you're going to end up here, and it similarly goes down to probably the fifth floor, and, and so on and so forth. And so this is like kind of snippets of four pages, but there's like 30 some odd pages probably that, that are just linked off that first one. And so you imagine, you know, if, if somebody here is new and wants to get MediaWiki set up, and they came to me and said, James, how do I install MediaWiki? I'm going to, if I was going to follow this, I'm going to have to say, okay, why don't you sit down? And I'm going to give you a you know ten thousand word dissertation on how to install install MediaWiki. Um, so that's not right. Um, MediaWiki should be ideally one action. So I was getting heckled saying it does does it have a GUI yet? I mean, ideally, I think you go to that install page, you click some download, and you double click on it, and and you have MediaWiki. Um, we're not there yet. Uh, another big thing is upgrades, I mentioned. Um, typically now we're looking at, you know, you're going to go into your, into your server and you're going to set it to read only and you're going to um, then go get new versions of all the stuff that you, that you want. Um, you're going to upgrade those, you know, either using Git or downloading them and decompressing them and so forth. Um, you're going to update the, the database probably and, and then the kind of the kicker is while you're doing all this, you try not to break anything. Um, there's more steps in there, and of course, again, you could write scripts to do all this and spend a lot of effort um, automating it yourself. Um, but ideally, it would just upgrade, right? On your phone, your, the apps on your phone just up, update. WordPress has auto-updated for years. Um, so why is that not a feature of, of MediaWiki? Um, So reconfiguring, uh, reconfiguring being changing settings um, and adding extensions and, and so on and so forth. Um, you know, it looks something like this. You're going to edit local settings. You're going to download some more stuff. You're going to make some updates. And, and uh, maybe you're going to have to additional, install additional services like Parsoid and, and Elasticsearch and all that, things that are complicated and not something you'd expect a new user to do. 
ideally, everything would be editable from a web interface. Um, again, or at least possible to edit from the web interface. Yeah. Wikipedia, you don't want just anybody to go and change settings for the entirety of Wikipedia. So that's got to be something that can be separated. But ideally, this should be possible for any random person's small wiki. And just looking at some other pain points, um, you know, people have problems with making reliable backups. Uh, I think we just were having a question about job queue as the last one finished up. It's always something that is, seems to be getting a lot of questions. Um, keeping configuration clean managed, you may not know that's a problem, but um, for us, Specifically, um, you know, we started out with one wiki and then we got another wiki and they had, were on different versions and then we got another wiki and it was on different versions and they have different config and, and Jared comes to me and says, hey, your wiki does this but mine doesn't, what's the deal? Um, you know, keeping all those things managed is a lot of work, especially as you get big and get lots of users. Um, so figuring out how to make that um, easy for people is important. Um, has it really been 28 minutes? Oh, when you do a 30-minute Yeah. Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Um, I was like, man, how are you guys not asleep yet? Uh, <laughs> um, so, uh, and the last thing is, I don't know if anybody here has ever moved servers, um, but it's a pain in the butt. Um, getting, getting from one production system and moving on to another one because you're changing hardware or something like that. That looks better. Um, it is um, difficult. So, I haven't actually used the word Meza yet, but Meza is a, um, is a system that um, several of us here are contributors to um, uh, that helps make administrating MediaWiki easier. Um, so here's some, some things that, can, that Meza can help with. Um, install, I, there's a Meza deploy command, you're essentially going to run that and there's good documents on it, uh, documentation on it on MediaWiki.org uh, for more specifics. But essentially, you're going to run the deploy command to get started, and it's going to install MediaWiki with Visual Editor and Sierra Search and um, you know Memcached and lo lots lots of things that you're going to want. Um, likewise, up, um, upgrading, you're going to run Meza update. It's going to give you a new version, and you're going to run deploy again. And deploy is essentially just make the server the way I want it to be. You know, make the way make it the way it should be. Um, again. The third one, you can see Meza deploy again. Uh, you're going to make some change to your config, and you're going to run Meza deploy, and it's going to make the server the way you want it to be. Um, it also does backups, um, and uh, it handles the job queue, makes sure makes sure that it's it's running um, each time you deploy. <coughs> I'm going to talk more about the config management stuff later, but um, it, it does do some things. It, it encourages you to use good, good practices there. It doesn't enforce it upon you, but um, it, it does uh, kind of improve that a lot. Um, and then lastly, you've got the Meso deploy command. You can do that with an overwrite option that allows you to essentially pull data live from any other server or, or not live from just files. Um, so that can be used when you're transitioning to a new server. For us, we use it. Um, we've got development servers that back up nightly, so we have the freshest production data on our, on our dev servers um, so people can, can be testing things on, on real, uh, real stuff. So like last night, Cindy and I are sitting there talking and my phone buzzed and said that our, our uh, backup had completed. Um, so Mez is another install method and I said at the top of this slide deck that, that uh, there's a lot of documentation on how to do installs, right? Um, so do we really want another install method. Um, you may have seen this before. Uh, <laughs> um, I'll give everybody that hasn't a second to read it. But um, the question is, I guess, why, why Meso? Why is it useful um, beyond what, what, what is already there? Um, and I think the, the key to that is a lot of that stuff that is, that is mentioned on the install page is not really um, comprehensive installers. It's not something that handles a lot of it for you and makes it easier. It's a lot of manuals. It's a lot of explanations of here's how to set up Apache and here's how to set up PHP and, and all that and um, in countless different um, environments. So um, the actual number of comprehensive installers is a, a lot lower. Uh, I'm not going to say that this is a comprehensive list of comprehensive installers, um, but 
these are some of them anyway. So MediaWiki Vagrant is something that, um, that a lot of people use for development. Um, specifically, I think the Wikimedia Foundation is, pushes it a lot for their developers. Um, but it's really development only. I, I don't think you could use it in a production case. Um, there's a few different Docker-based projects. Again, I think, and feel free to correct me if I'm wrong, but I think they're also mostly develop, development focused, um, not so much production focused at this time. Yes, production? Less. What? Less. Okay. Um, there's a couple of, I called them puppet based, but basically it's like the Wikimedia Foundation manages their servers with something called Puppet, um, as does a, um, another thing called Mirahees that I think um, your own did a podcast on that was released yesterday. Wish you'd released it before I got on a plane. I could have listened to it. Um, um, anyway, they're really focused production, and I don't think they're so much extensible. Nobody is suggesting you go copy the Wikimedia Foundation's Puppet code and use it for your own you know, case. It's not, it doesn't allow you to get started. Um, so, you know, not really good for our, for our case. Um, and then there's, there's Debian packages, but they are really, A, only for Debian, and, and B, they are really only MediaWiki core. They're not doing all the other stuff that is the, the complicated aspect. Um, so, Meza's goals, so that's the tagline that's written at the top of the Git project, but um, the, the goal is to make it easy enough for everyone, and, and I'm gonna say we're not really there yet, but it's easier than a lot of things. Um, automate everything that, that we can, um, as much as I can. If I notice that I'm doing something as an, as an administrator, um, I try to figure out how to make it so I don't have to do it anymore. Um, kind of trying to eliminate my own job as much as possible. Um, Works for both production and dev, so you can dev develop something on your own um, computer, but then also use it for your production site, um, and then support more than just Debian. And so it's historically, um, as has only worked on Red Hat, because um, that's what we needed for our particular case. Um, we added Debian support fairly recently, and the hope would be to add a few more. <clears throat> so just talking about some of the weaknesses, um, there's not a one action install, it's not close to that yet, it's more like a six action install, um, and it requires you to use a command line, so we want to get better than that. Um, but upgrade is pretty easy, I mean, as I said before, you basically run a couple of commands and your, your system is updated. Um, but again, auto upgrade would be better, right? If it just, you logged in and it told you, congratulations, your system has been updated to the new version. Um, there have been some people that have complained about built-in extensions. Um, so that is kind of a, that can kind of go both ways. Some people might look at that and say, oh great, I install this and I automatically get all these great extensions. That's awesome. Other people look at that and say, I don't want that extension. I don't want that extension. I want to be able to pick what's there. So um, it's planned to be removed in the next, uh, in the upcoming version. Um, and instead it, it will just kind of give you a baseline that you can edit. Um, another weakness, um, planning on being able to uh, install uh, extensions from the from the web interface itself, uh, at least a small subset of them, um, kind of a you know um, pre-approved extensions, uh, but we're not there yet, and still no settings changes. So if you want to uh, change some variable, you you can't do that from the web yet. Strengths, however, uh, I already talked about install, upgrade, reconfig, backups, imports, job queue. I kind of hinted at the um, good config management. Um, and I didn't say anything about auto, auto deploy error, but I'll talk about that in a minute. A um, few other things, though. Um, it, this, this does create a wiki farm, so it is easy to add wikis. Meza create wiki command does it. Um, you know, got lots of lots of wikis that we're managing with it. Um, it does install kind of the difficult extensions like Visual Editor and Serious Search. I added SMW in there, not because it's particularly hard to install, but it has issues with rebuilding data and such that, have, that happen, especially as you get to a larger, larger wiki that can be kind of problematic, and it handles some of those large wiki aspects. Uh, the other thing is it, it does make it so you can use a multi-server setup. So if you define that I've got a database server and or multiple database servers and multiple application servers, you, you can do all that. Uh, I think Greg is running that way on some things. I'm not doing that in production personally, but. Um, <clears throat> so um, auto deployer. Um, this is kind of, again, kind of one of those things you don't really realize that you have a problem until 
you get a solution and see how great it is. Um, what we do with this is we have all of our config in, um, in a config repository or a couple of config repositories. Um, and we allow people to submit changes to it. So if somebody wants to add the revision slider extension um, to our wiki, they submit a request that says, you know, add these lines of code. And somebody that has the ability to accept those changes, so Darren or myself or a couple other people, um, can say, you know, what do people think about this? And we'll have a discussion about it, and then we eventually accept the change. And Auto Deployer picks that change up and um, deploys it and puts it on uh, puts it on our server. So here's an example. You know, this is adding the cargo extension. You're saying the name of it is cargo and here's where you get it from, I want to track the master version, and here's some config re related to it. And um, our evil proprietary chat program um, picks up, get, gets notifications saying, you know, deploy is starting, and then hopefully deploy passes shortly thereafter. Um, so example of a config, a public config is that URL at the bottom. Um, Another aspect that this allows us to handle is we can have those requests for changes um, first go to, to a kind of our master branch. So somebody will um, submit that change and we'll accept it and it will get deployed to a staging server. Um, that allows us to then test it out, make sure it didn't cause any problems, make sure people like the change, um, and then we can subsequently pull those changes into a production branch that actually will then go out to our production server. Um, I mean, this isn't anything uh, groundbreaking from a, from a, you know, the way real websites <laughs> and applications work, um, but it, it's really nice thing to have um, fairly easily with your, um, you know, small MediaWiki setup. You know, you're running with, not with a whole development team. Um, so I'm running out of time. Um, this has all been a really high level aspect or a view of, of Meza. Um, there's pretty good docs, and thanks to several people in this room that have, that have added to the documentation. Um, you know, Rich and, and Greg have added a lot of documentation to, to the um, to MediaWiki.org slash Meza, the Meza page on MediaWiki.org. Um, it goes into a little bit more detail, and, and um, I'll take more questions, but. I just wanted to reiterate that I really believe that we should strive for this. Um, and we're not there yet, um, but I, I believe that Meza is a good step in that direction. Um, and yeah, I'll take questions. Hi, James. Did you wear that black t-shirt as a tribute to Steve Jobs? It's not black, it's blue. <laughs> it's not a turtleneck either. Any other questions? Just wondering, when, when MES is all said and done, it's run and set up and everything, how different does it look than somebody who read through all 10,000 pages like me and installed it using the basic instructions? What is, is the final product any different? Like, is the directory structure different, anything like that? Um, so, how does it look on a, the server side, or are you saying the MediaWiki itself? Um, it's, it installs most stuff in the, in the opt directory. Um, so kind of declutters it from other things, which maybe isn't a good decision and could easily be changed. And in fact, it's all actually configurable. You could, you could change that and install things in other places, but by default, it puts it in opt. I mean, like the extensions are in the extension folder? Yeah, yeah. As far as config is concerned, it distributes things nicely so that um, if you have a wiki farm and multiple wikis, the individual per wiki config stuff is broken down in a nice way and um, easy to edit by the way things are broken up into files. So it adds a little bit of structure in the way, in the directory structure for the config part, I think.
So for someone who knows a lot about MediaWiki but zero things about servers, what background knowledge would you suggest having before going into the Mesa documentation specifically? So knows a lot about MediaWiki but not about servers? Right. Um, um, so it expects some familiarity with like using the command line now, at least not fear to use the command line, but it doesn't expect you to know like anything about how Linux is structured or how to get to specific directories or anything like that. So um, I've had some people that have said, oh yeah, that was really straightforward, I didn't have any problems. And, you know, new users that, that have no familiarity here. I have other people that said, I didn't get it. So I think, um, I think it kind of comes down to whether you're willing to follow the directions, which are pretty straightforward. They're not really that much to it. I mean, really have tried to get it down to one action. It's just not there yet. It's like five actions, right? If you follow them and you're not freaked out by the fact that you're typing on a command line, I, I, I think it's, it's, but it's also hard from my perspective, you know? It, you need the new user's perspective to say, this is what was hard. So I absolutely would love that feedback. Great. I would just offer some perspective in, in response to that. If, if you're a new user and if you've ever wanted to try Vagrant, you know, maybe a little bit of working knowledge of, of Vagrant would help. Uh, that's one of the, I think, strong features of Meza is that for local development, it comes um, pre-configured to spin up a local, uh, like MediaWiki Vagrant, there's Meza uh, Deploy Vagrant. And so you can deploy a full system into a virtual container on your laptop. And so if you're familiar with, with Vagrant just a little bit, um, it's a great, Mesa is a great tool that lets you do that local development and then, and then reproduce that in a server environment. Um, the other thing, like I, you know, as far as Mesa and, and where does it put everything, um, it does try to contain itself in Opt. And, and that's good because it doesn't, it doesn't clobber, it won't clobber an existing system if you've got Apache installed and stuff like that. Um, but it does edit the Apache configuration in the normal, you know, Etsy Apache conf, Apache conf. Um, one of the nice things that Meza does is it actually includes the debug logs and the types of Cirrus logs and job queue logs and things like that that take a lot of time to set up. So if you're familiar with, with like where the server, you know, what the server should look like, you'll be surprised to find that there's a logs directory with all the logs that you could possibly want. So that's another nice feature. Uh, I don't know Mesa, but uh, my question is, uh, what, is, what is really the difference between uh, this approach uh, or using something like Docker, Docker Compose, uh, uh, that is, you can make your configuration uh, using uh, Git uh, or uh, Rancher to deploy and uh, automate uh, everything? Um, so, Mesa, the command could be a wrapper on anything. Like right now, I didn't say anything about what's behind it, right? I told you there's a command that does this. I didn't tell you that it's using Ansible behind. I didn't tell you whether it's using Docker or not. Um, so if that is what makes sense to do in the future, that could be done. And Docker is used for testing cases. I don't use it in any production cases at the moment. But um, so, you know, just using Docker Compose doesn't set up MediaWiki for you. Right, like you have to have something that is that is configuring everything, um, and so if there's somebody that is that is using Docker Compose with Lex, I'd, I'd love to talk to you about that. Um, yeah, on the day three on the Create Camp, Lex has proposed a session on his Docker-based configuration, and one of my goals this week is getting Lex and James to talk about ways to get Docker and Meza to work together. All right. Thank you. Thank you.